off. Ah! Take off failed. Yeah. Welcome to February update channel update thing thing. Okay, welcome. Uh, I may sound a little bit croaky because once again I've got a cold. <sighs> oh well, at least it isn't the flu, it's a cold. So, you know, small mercies and all that sort of thing. I hope you're all pretty well. You haven't got anything corona related apart from uh, where, when I was a kid. The, we used to be a Corona van it used to go around all the streets where I lived and they used to sell um, uh, lemonade and sherry aid and Coca-Cola and all that sort of thing. We used to chase after it um, and get the cherry aid and things. Um, but this is something totally different, of course. Um, so hopefully you'll be well and safe and everything else. Okay. Well, first of all, we have this. Um, <laughs> I know I do build some weird things, so I. Um, this is a card model, or paper model, whichever you want to call it, um, that I actually downloaded and printed off on the piece of card 12 years ago, 15 years ago, and uh, I put it inside a book, thinking, ah, oh, I'll build that one day. It's interesting, it's a, of an old Commodore, uh, business machine which I can't remem remember the name of unfortunately um, but um, I built it the other day and I thought you know it actually turned out quite well it's actually quite detailed um, it's very simple as you can see but it is what it is it, it is a Commodore business machine from about 1984-ish maybe that's a guess <laughs> I was into computers in those days, 8-bit yeah, com computers, of course, but uh, I think it turned out rather well. Um, it even has the detail on the uh, on the bottom there, and even the keyboard when it comes around in the second. It's got all the plugs at the back there, the keyboard, here's the keyboard. Um, that's it, it's just cardboard, or card, whichever, and at the back there has all the details, manufactured details, oops, I'm sorry, I don't know around. There we go. But I just think it looks cool. And it's a little bit different, and it might get me in. That might mean that took me an hour to build. Uh, uh, because there's a fair bit of cutting, you know. There's, it's not one of those kits where it comes pre cut, cut, and you have to use a very sharp knife and all that sort of thing. Um, but I like it, I think it's quite cool. So that's the, the first thing. So we're going to jump cut to the next thing. Uh, jump cut means me just doing this and putting that o over there, and then hang, hang reaching up trying to reach for this model on the shelf which I stupidly put out of reach and putting it on there um, this is a this is a I can't remember it was an Ari kit um, you know I can't remember <laughs> I think it's an Ari, no maybe not an Ari kit I can't remember now but it's one of those uh, one thirty second kits very it was it was like like a snap kit and i thought it's not going to look that great i like vans i don't know why i like vans but i like vans and i thought i just tell you what i'll weather the poo out of it i'll just weather it weather it weather it and uh, hopefully that will cut cover up the uh things that are wrong with it um i think it looks quite cool it's weathered up to hell and back as you can see um it's got the tarp on the back there um yeah, yeah i quite enjoy doing it this was a long well this was a, a long weekend sort of pro project you know an hour there an hour here you know all that sort of thing but if we uh, i'll put some weights into it because i always put weights yeah i use those um railroad weights you put into uh wagons and things uh freight cars and as you can see that's the top which is just a a piece of um bin liner cuts and then weathered up 
I put the stickers on the side, which are just stickers which I've just cut tiny parts out of. Um, you can see it's had a, a, a cracked window there. Somebody's put a smiley face, <laughs> which is kind of strange in there. Um, I, I sort of got the windows sort of right, but not right. Uh, but next time around it will look better. It's a GMC. Uh, and it's got a fair bit of weathering. This part's here, whoops, I just used um, tape and put tape onto the paint and then pulled it off and it pulls off the paint and leaves these marks, which I thought was rather clever of me. And if you look inside there, which isn't easy with this cat camera, but you can see that there's ripped seats, see? And there's cans that they've left behind and even some on the on the dash there, see? And the bottom, that's been weathered up pretty fairly a lot. Uh, it's been standing out forever, this van. I mean, it's, it, as I say, the model itself is a very simple one. We even got plastic wheels here. But um, yeah, I enjoy doing that. That was a good build. Um, it's nice when you do something you like. <laughs> and sometimes I do things and I think, oh, why have I started this? Well, you know, I'm not enjoying it. Why have I started it? But this one, it was a really fun build. I did enjoy it. So that's that one. And then the third one, I think there's a third one. Yeah, I'm going to have to reach again. Sorry about this. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Why do I do this? Ah, God damn it. Ah, yeah. Is one of these, um, there's a name for them. Uh, yeah, they're Chinese kits, as far as I know. And they're cute, cute tanks. Um, and there's always been a... The thing about cute tanks and cute warships and stuff like that you have to remember that although the these tanks look as if they came from world war ii and are essentially world war ii models mostly um whether they're airplanes uh, spitfires or tanks or warships um they feature in japanese and chinese um uh, comics and uh, anime and TV shows and things of that sort but they're not related to the World War it's a strange sort of situation where they use the World War 2 models but use them out of that universe they use them in their own universe where they have cute girls and uh, different stories and all, all sorts of things of that sort and they're really enjoyable but you always have to remember, especially us in the West, that that is how they see it. That's how they see it. They don't see uh, a World War II tank that killed lots of people or, or got defeated or was it, it involved in uh, the Kursk um, offensive or whatever. Uh, these are tanks which were in the Second World War, but they used in their own um, fantasy world of and that's that's how you should see it, see it you know once you start watching these shows you do you get involved and, and you do sort of get involved in that and you stop thinking that these are second world war serious bits of armor and um i'm going too far deep into this and it shouldn't really be um but this is the model from a chinese make which i can't remember the name of because i don't think it had a name uh, it's very well done, very well made. I've weathered it a little bit. I didn't really paint it. The tracks are absolutely fantastic. And if we had these tracks in ta Tamiya kits, I'd be so pleased because they're, they're literally, you can actually, they're beautiful, they're absolutely great. They don't really sag, and I need to put some sag into these things. Um, and you pin them together, not individually, but they come in a big, long track, but you pin the last one together so you don't really get that situation where you get that horrible join and um i don't know how they did it but i hope they use these tracks more in real proper modeling um where you just have to join it together you can see the join there is a bit of fluff strange enough <laughs> where it's joined up but yeah it's a nice little build it's not over yet because i've ordered some parts to uh, make a little diorama of this it's cute as you can say or kawaii um it's cute 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 uh, it's a cute little like a, a german tank 
essentially. And I've just weathered it a little bit, not much. But it's going to be involved in a, a more of a, a diorama sort of display slash what the hell is that sort, sort of thing. But then that's me. So that there's um, all three models that I've built this month. Yay! <coughs> but I'm sure you're all asking what's going to be on the bench for this coming month of sort of February slash March. Um, well, first of all, we're going to build this old kit. For some reason, I really like old kits, even though they're really pretty much crap. Uh, this is a, an Aurora kit, so that's quite rare. It's a Jag or Jaguar. Hellcat um, with a customizing kit. Extra chrome parts. And the extra chrome parts is literally that thing on the on on the roof on the bonnet, and maybe that is down down there. And that is it. Also, as you can see, it has this very strange wing type affair on the back. And uh, let me show you. Let's open it up. This wasn't that expensive either, so surprisingly, being a Aurora kit. There's the actual car. <laughs> There's the actual car, and it's okay. Very thick plastic for its day. This is dates from the 60s, I think. Um, looks cool. Looks okay. Fine, fine, fine. All going fine. It's got some chrome parts, as they said, which is great. Uh, why they have to advertise the fact that there's chrome parts? I suppose it's because you don't often get a uh, a um, what do you call it? A hood scoop. Um, and we've got all the other parts in here as well. They've got some plastic or oh, vinyl tires which are rock hard now but it looks all good 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 until you get to that weird looking thing at the back there and then you come across this this is it so it looks like it's a different color still made of the same stuff but it looks like what they did was oh we got these uh jaguars hmm well they look all right you know but we've been selling these for years what shall we do i'll tell you what we got that part and we didn't go on our last kit so let's stick it on this one. Oh, do you think so do you think it'll fit oh it doesn't really matter stick it in the box anyway okay let's have a look okay how does this it doesn't have any you can't there's no there's nothing for this to fit what what the is it go on to there by the look at the box is supposed to be about there i mean what the i no all right put it in the box don't worry about it sell it 50 cents no problem at all and that's what they did <laughs> and that's why we've got this weird looking thing with a, with a i don't know what it is it, well, i know what that is it's a window but i mean even if you put it at the back here like that there's no glass well there's no clear parts for this window there's no clear parts for the actual clear parts should should be in this kit uh, i presume you have to sort of make them yourself or not have them there at all um there are some decals oh let's have a look at the instructions la 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 instructions vintage instructions uh and there it is and it tells you that it is in fact a jaguar xk 120 it's called the 120 because it was the first I think it was the first Jaguar to go over 120 miles an hour. It went 132.6 miles an hour in 1953. Bloody hell. Lamar. Um, and it's pretty much very, very simple, which is fantastic. Um, <laughs> um, so we're going to build this somehow. I don't know if we're going to put that extra part on. I want to because it just looks... And you know me, I like things that look different and I think it goes on there like that somehow uh, we're gonna have to glaze over there and it's okay um, also dickles dickles which are down here are eh, just a little bit yellow not huge but a bit I mean you know could you put those into the Sun no you'd have to send them on a spaceship to the Sun to actually bleach these things out um, so we're not going to use those. It's been a bit of a shame that uh, Jaguar emblem is pretty, pretty cool. But I managed to find some old dickles, and all it's going to have is some numbers on the side, and these are fine. Probably 12, I expect. Put one on the bonnet, and two on the sides. Uh, but that's the, my next build, uh, sort of, coming up soon. 
Uh, so that's going to be fun. You'll see that. And I forgot to put the instructions in. Put that over there. Next on the list of things I'm going to build this month. Oh, God. <laughs> Wish I hadn't done that. Anyway, put that over there. Is this. Okay. Stonehenge. Uh, in Britain, Britain has been around for a long time. And you know Stonehenge is the ancient monument uh, that was used for religious purposes and stuff like that. Oh, who knows? Uh, but Stonehenge. So somebody uh, very kindly sent this to me free of charge as a little extra something. Uh, just a family member. Uh, maybe they went, so I don't know. And in here are all the, you know, stones. <laughs> So we're going to make a little diorama. Uh, they're quite well done, actually. Quite nicely detailed, to be honest with you. I think they're quite cool. Um, and also you get a little mat, which is this, which essentially tells you where to put the stones. But we're not going to do that. Well, we're going to build Stonehenge, but we're not going to do that. We're going to do this. So we're going to have a little diorama. I'm into dioramas all of a sudden. I don't know why. Uh, this is an old box, <laughs> as, you, <laughs> as you can see. It used to hold slides. I used to be a photographer years ago. And uh, we took photographs uh, in prints, and we also used slides or transparencies. And we used to have boxes, lots and lots of boxes like this, to hold hundreds and hundreds of transparencies. And they're just perfect for a bit of a, you know, a bit of a display. And so you could actually put these on here i wouldn't put this thing on there i'd you know have my own grass on there and i mean build it into something but i've got a few ideas about this and uh you'll see this as well over the next month or two month or two with a few weeks or two hopefully um don't know how long it's going to take but it's going to be interesting um so you're going to see some updates on that so that's my next build um on i don't know if you use facebook I, I it's the only thing i do use i don't use twitter i don't use insta thinky bob um i use facebook because i've got a lot of friends on facebook it seems right to do so um and what they do on facebook is that some people make models usually 3d what do you call it 3d printed ones i've only ever bought one 3d printed um model ever and it was this one uh this is um ray's blaster from star wars um it's actually turned out quite quite well except that the fact it was 3d printed um this part is a bit loose in fact comes off entirely <laughs> just for ease um but um this was a bugger pardon the expression to build because that now this was a few years ago this was three three years ago when the art of 3d printing was pretty rough and um the curves and things were very difficult to do and the resolution of those printers was pretty poor i mean if you look at the handle there you can see the striations in in the handle i i, I left those in simply because i lost patience so they couldn't be bothered really filling them in um, but can you imagine this barrel was literally a 20-sided barrel at one stage and I had to fill it with tons, tons of um, Tamiya um, primer and then really get uh, sandpaper and just sh 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 and make it into a, a circle of some sort, same with the tops here. So yeah, my experience with 3D printing wasn't always that fantastic to be honest with you um but it turned turned out fine i put some weight on the inside again because i do do that it gives it a bit of weight because 3d printing stuff is, is pretty light so anyway on facebook there's a guy called brian montague and he has a resin 3d printer which is slightly different in that it can get better re resolution so i believe and as you all know i'm really into ufo the tv series which is uh, the tv series before space 1999 and 
I asked him if he could print me the shuttle from that TV show. And since he was, uh, he had the pattern and all that sort of thing, he said, yeah, no problem, I'll charge you this. And it, it charged me a reasonable amount. Oh, it's actually quite decent, to be honest with you. It's quite a big model. I don't know what scale it, this would be. Probably about one thirty second ish Anyway. Oh, damn it. The, uh, yeah. uh, losing parts. Sorry about that. One thing you should never do is lose parts. Okay. So what this is, is the shuttle from UFO and it's actually a solid piece of resin printing and quite heavy actually it does still have the striations but they're much if you look there they're much smaller much smaller and he's able to do curves proper curves without you having to uh use half a ton of primer anyway and um, we've got things like this where's the big one so this fits which one way goes into there perfectly look at that it fits perfectly into there that goes on the end and then these two boosters go on the end there and he supplied us with two canopies um they've got one with open ca canopy here as you can see uh, which goes in there it's there oh well it goes in there ah or you've got a closed canopy or one without windows which is the sort of thing i'd use because if you had it open you'd have to put something in there for interest i think and that goes on there and this is probably falling as well so you've got two can canopies there we go and that's how it looks uh, it's quite long it's about 12 inches long uh, it's going to look like this picture maybe <laughs> Hopefully, hopefully it's going to look like that. Oh, okay, maybe. All right, so they're the things we're going to start building over the next um, month in March. Hopefully. Okay, what about supplies? Because I do like buying tools. Um, yeah, let's just show you those. So, so in February, I went on eBay, as is my want. And no, I didn't buy a mug. Although I do like this mug. I like it for holding things because if you try and drink tea or coffee out, out, out of this mug then it goes down the side of your face. But no mind. What I did buy though are these Gundam markers. Uh, I bought 15 of them and somebody on eBay was selling them for, oh, how much were these? About £12 for 15 which is a bargain. All brand, brand new as well. I've used a few of them of course. Uh, but that, they're great because they're, they're not like, I mean I've got these things which are you know obviously uh sharpies which work fine uh but these are made for plastic so they say and um this one hasn't been used as you can see still white but very pleased with that very pleased with with the mug as well ha, 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 ha. the other thing i got was a new um well i've been using these things obviously like everybody else has you know um files are they called files that sort of thing you know these things uh and i use lots of them I, i've got uh, tons of um paper as well and uh 2000 grit all that sort of thing but i've always used these a lot and they've been great and i still buy them now but then, then i saw bad grendels you might know bad Gr Gr grendels he has a channel on uh, youtube uh, have a look, Bad Grendels. I'll, if I remember, I'll put it down in doobly doo down below. And he came across a different type of file. Now, the one he bought was <laughs> quite posh. Uh, I think it cost about $20 or something like that. And I thought, mm, yeah, it looks really good, but I'm not spending $20, dear, oh dear. So I found these on eBay. Yeah, I'm, I'm probably the best advert for eBay in the world. And, and these are glass. So if I can open it up. <laughs> I bought a few of these because they're so cheap. Whoa, there we go. And they're literally um, files. <laughs> There's a name for them. I can't remember what what is. You know, for filing plastic. And this is it. And the thing about it, well, I 
bad Grendel's bought them because he makes a lot of Gundam kits. And when you click the parts from Gundam ki clit, uh, kits, not I almost said a naughty thing there, it leaves that li little nib from the actual uh, sprue. And you use your knife to take that nib off, that little bit of plastic. And he found that with the glass ones, you can just file it away because they're not uh, flexible like the normal ones. Uh, these are really, really, really unflexible. Um, they do a better job. And I have to admit, that does feel, it, it doesn't look like much, but, and I've tried it out and it does file those tiny little parts that stick up and you try and use your knife to get rid of them and you can't it really does that job really really well now i bought a few of these because i'm going to send a few to a few friends and things and i bought a couple for myself but have a look on ebay for these and um they really do work and they are glass and they come in a little package there because you can drop these on something hard and they will break i'm sure um but just a thought so there are the supplies that we've done, I think. Yep, that is about it. Next up, what about new kits? Have I bought any new kits? Well, let me tell you a story in a moment. Next, we have a little story for you. Um, recently, I was going through my Facebook and somebody very close to where I lived was selling some model kits. Um, it was a lady of a gent who unfortunately passed away, which is a shame. Uh, his name was Ken and he passed away and he left a very large um, stash and uh, I contacted him and, went, and she said yeah come, come around and see what you want but by the time unfortunately I just couldn't go around there straight away but by the time I went around there um, most of the newer kits most of the modern kits the expensive ones had gone and I said, oh, I'm sorry, 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 they got it. I said, oh, that's okay, don't worry, worry. But she, she said, I've got these boxes in the back that nobody's taken them. Um, you can just have them if you want, just for a few quid. And I said, oh, okay, I'll have a look. And thinking that they're just going to be, you know, just old kits, that are, you know, parts are gone and all sorts of things. Anyway, there's these few boxes back there. And I opened them up and because... <laughs> Old kits don't worry me. I like old kits because they're wonderful. And there's one type of old kit that which is more wonderful than anything else. And that's matchbox kits. Um, they have, if it's the box art or the way they're made, um, <laughs> they've been repopped so many times since matchbox went, went under. Um, and there were three boxes full of matchbox kits. I mean, full and um, there was also another box absolutely chock-a-block full of baggy kits you know those are all baggy kits um with a header and a bag with with, with the parts and things and there's loads of airfix and frog and yeah, all the rest of them um and i said well i'll take these and she gave me a very good price and i took them and this little video coming up now is just a little video of all those models that I got that day. Nice, so we got box number one. This is the first box I bought from her. And uh, when I opened up, I couldn't believe what was inside. But uh, as you can see, it's, I mean, it's a pretty thick, thick? Is that the word? Deep box. And it's absolutely chock-a-block full of old airfix kits, frog kits, um, all baggy kits. They're all baggy kits, as I like to call them, of course. Nova? Novo? I think that's a frog kit, an old frog kit we got. I mean, it's, it's deep. There's, I uh, counted over 60, maybe 70 kits in here. Uh, so that was good. Um, we don't know what we're going to do with them. Keep the one, oh, Churchill tank, I love the t Churchill tank. Keep the ones we want to hang on to, I don't know, sell the rest, I don't know. But they'll, <laughs> they're gonna have to stay there for all the time being. So that's the baggy kits. Next, we have the Matchbox kits. 
So this is box one. I could get some more lights. Oops, got my finger in the way. Sorry about that. Using my oh god, that's not good. <laughs> uh, actually, having a bright day for a change. So in here we have airfix kits. Uh, let's see, get it right now. right way. As you can see, it's a box full. You get a catalogue. Um, I haven't seen one of these for a long time. Cool, huh? 1987. Okay. And in here, we've got, well, as you can see, it's chock-a-block full of matchbox kits. And there we go. This just goes through this lot. Um, I think these will probably end up on eBay or I'll be sending a few to a few friends and things. The ones they want. Uh, there's some doubles and triples and things. That's uh, interesting, and they've all got that beautiful let's show you, artwork, which I've always been a thing with uh, Matchbox kits. You know, beautiful artwork. So that's box one of the Matchbox kits. Let's get box two out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Worn out now. <laughs> I've been trying to get these boxes out. So here's some more. Uh, let's see, that's a Mitchell, I think. There we go. Mitchell. These are quite large. They're 170 seconds, but because of their large planes, are physically quite large. Um, well, that's one of my favourite planes, but I don't think I'll hang on to it. But the Prowler. Rrr, just looks so cool. Um, what's this one? That is a, a Voodoo. Now go to that Voodoo that you do. Oh, uh, that's a camera, as you can see. You can definitely see that's a camera. We've even got a, a ship, which, which is the Minneapolis, and a few extra planes down here. Um, uh, what is that one? That is a. Oh, an F 16A. There we go. Um, so cool, cool. There's. Quite, uh, what is that? A Wesley weird looking plane. <laughs> another ship and a another a Henschel. So that's the box number two. And then I realised, and I didn't know this. Well, I did know this, but I'd forgotten. There's actually a box number three. Just one second. This is box number three. Let's open it up. I forgot I had this one. I thought I'd had it. I thought two boxes was it, but no, apparently not. Uh, ship, tank, Soviet tank. Um, of course, you've got to have a Spitfire somewhere along the way. And then, oops, they're all falling off. Never mind, we've got all these. So, uh, some doubles and things. But he just collected them. I don't know if it is. There's two of those Soviet planes. Lots and lots and lots and lots and lots. I mean, most of these will yeah, one day end up on eBay. I don't know when. When I've got some time. That's um, that's a that's a hell of a box of matchbox, isn't it? Anyway, back to the bench. Well, hello. Do you like group builds? I like group builds. Do you know why I like group builds? It's because group builds is the only reason why I build it anything half the time. It just gives you the impetus to actually go into your stash and go oh well, i've got that kit or i've got that sort of su subject um that sounds interesting let's do it this group build i've already built the um the solverloo from the video game xavius and i'm going to do another kit for that same video game group build so you can build anything you want as long as it featured in a, a video game whether it's a you know a, a, PlayStation game or Nintendo or in my case arcade game um, and just build a kit from there it could be a car spaceship a figure anything that's featured from a, a video game and um, we invite you well I invite you uh, it's not my um, um, group build it belongs to steve the fish.net but 
join in. It sounds good, sounds fun. Now my second entry into that group build is this Lancia. Um, I just love these cars. And this was owned by Nitto, which is an unusual name, but there we go. I don't think they're around anymore. And it's the Lancia, uh, I think, is this the Lancia Delta? HF? Mm, or Stratos, stupidly. It's right in front of me as well. The Lancia Stratos Delta. <laughs> I wouldn't mind building the Delta. Um, but this is the one I'm building. It's 124 scale. Oh, let's have a look at the side. And it has the opening hood thing, engine cover. Um, it's a pretty old kit, which means, I mean, the thing with these kits, of course, being ra rally cars, is the Dickles. And in here, although a lot of things have yellowed, the Dickles look pretty damn good. Um, it's coming over. There we go. Um, they look fine, I think. I'm going to use them anyway. And they may be a little bit yellowed here and there, but I think they look fine. And we're going to use those. Um, and get rid of that. That can go there. It's a pretty simple build, which suits me down to the ground. And uh, this is the actual car. It looks fine. It looks like it had some, something across there. Like you tend to find that with these kits where you have that huge space there, they tend to put something across, but it wasn't on mine. Uh, tires. Oh, ah, oh, shine. Yeah, it's a motorized kit. I hate these things. Why do the Japanese, Chinese, and everybody else decide to put a little crappy motor? in the kit. I don't think, don't see the point of it, but there we go. Uh, dun, 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 got the wheels, nice big chunky tyres. I don't know, we'll, we'll see how that goes. <laughs> um, at the end of the day, it's not going to be motorised because I just don't see the point. But there we go, that's the, my entry, my next entry, into the video game model kit build. Group build, come on. Join in. You must have something in there. What what have you got in your stash that you could say, oh, that was in the video game. This one was in Sega Rally for the, ooh, what was it for? The Dreamcast and for the Saturn and also for the um, arcade as well. So that's what I'm building. So out of all those, lots of kits and I'm not going to keep them all they're going to fund my hobby essentially but I decided to keep a few of them because they are really good kits uh, I'm not really into the military side of things um, but I do like to build a few aircraft and tanks now and then and I uh, decided I just hang on to a few of them and the rest down the line somewhere I'll give away a few to friends and things if if they want some and they say, oh, you got that one, and then I'll just send it over to you. Uh, the rest of them will go onto eBay, and it will fund this hobby. Uh, but I decided, decided to just hang on to a few, and the few I've hung on to are these. So we got the A70 Corsair II, one of my all-time favourite aircraft for some reason. I think it's because there was a video game, weirdly, <laughs> called Era, Era 21? God, my brain's going. And this was in era 21. And, and uh, I loved it. And I still think it's one of the best looking at airplanes ever. Just love it. So we're keeping that one. We've got, let's see. Uh, I've decided to do some British jets. I do like jets more than rotor planes, I have to say. And this is the uh, Hawker Hunter. So we're going to keep that one. we got the... Oops, Dizzy. Uh, the Buccaneer, one of my favourites again. Um, it was one of the longest lives of any military uh, jet aircraft ever, I think. Um, this ended up, I think it started off in the early 60s, or even the late 50s, and it ended up uh, fighting in the um, Desert War, you know, so uh, the, the Iraqi War as well. Um, that was keeping that one, and also we're keeping the Lightning. Not the best military plane ever built but if you want to get the, I mean the, the South Africans still still use these planes because they can pretty much fly straight up uh, until they reach the very ed edge of uh, space uh, <laughs> and you can pay, pay a lot of money to uh, go on that trip so we're going to keep that one what else have we got 
down it. We've got some weird ones. I remember building this one, the Brewster Buffalo, when I was a kid. And I remember loving this plane simply because it is the most, it is the strangest looking thing. Stubby wings, stubby body thing. It didn't really do very well in their war. Uh, it did pretty well in India because nobody else wanted it. Um, we've got that one. We've got the... I love this. I mean, I wish I could get get this um, artwork. Um, we've got the Grunham Hellcat uh, because it just looks cool. And the artwork looks fantastic. We've got the Warhawk. My voice went up there. Warhawk. That's why I've got a cold. Warhawk. Uh, the P40N Warhawk, which is uh, great in uh, RAF and uh, US. Yep. And that's good. Um, ba -ba -ba. Oh, and the last one we decided to hang on to is the um, P51D Mustang. And this one's in the very original old, old, old box. I may need to get, get some new dickles for this this one. Because, oh, you know what? That's not bad. Considering these are 40 years old, that's not bad. Um, but this is in the original box. And then they went to the side opening box after that. So, so I'm keeping those matchbox kits. And then we've also bought a few kits as well off mainly ebay um because i am well let's face it i'm a bit of an ebay uh i do like a bargain on ebay and it has to be a bargain okay i'm into small kits at the moment so i've been buying a few of these things um not upside down though mainly the right way around and this is the grunham f14 tomcat and it's by ls which I bought a few of their kits and they're fun fun kits and this is just a little little dinky kit with the instructions on ah on the box lid <laughs> that's a 1144 1, scale I think does it say 1144 1, scale and it's just a little I do like the small kits nowadays I do like the small thing um, so there's that one that's the LS model I bought another LS model because these are dirt cheap as well. Um, some pe people try and charge £15 for these things, but uh, you can get them for a fiver if you look. And this one's the F-18 Hornet. And there it is again. A really nice kit. It's got dickles, so they're nice and small. Instructions on the lid. All very good. Um, then we've got another. This is a 1 100th scale. This is the Mirage, which is a beautiful aircraft. Um, Delta wing thing. Um, French Capu. So that's still beautiful aircraft. And it's by Tamiya, which well, I opened it, as you can see, to see. And that's cool. Yeah, the smaller kits, are, I'm getting into those. Uh, the other kit we got, and I, I might actually introduce this in for the vi vi the model um, video group build, is this one. Now, anybody of you know what this is from? Uh, Selection Model Series 2. Um, I don't know what this is from. Um, it's by Sega, and it is a kit of this character here. But it'd be interesting to know what it's from. Is it from a, a game? Or an anima? Hmm, interesting. Um, it's just a little figure. But um, it's plastic though. I'm just intrigued when I see these kits, you see. Uh, even got some eye decals, I think. Intri intriguing. <laughs> okay, so if if any of you are out there know what, oh, hang on, somebody's written in the. Oh, look at that! I didn't see that. Recur Red Orchid. 
Ah, I haven't a clue. I still I don't know what, what it is. I know it's called Red Orchid now, and this is Re Kuren Kuren. Um, maybe the TV show is called Red or Orchid, or the game is called Red Orchids. But that, at least we know. Bloody hell. <laughs> well, now this one's a big hit, and I got this simply because of the subject, and because it was cheap. Much cheaper than it should should have been, for some strange reason. I'm going to have to show it to you sideways, okay? Here we go, here we go, here we go. And it is, look at that, Godzilla. Yes, I know, by Polar Lights. And these kits you usually go for because, well, they're collectible nowadays, I suppose. Um, you know, good 80 to 100 pounds, and I got this for about 40, I think. But uh, it's by Polar Lights, it's all sealed. I might do a review of this one. Uh, and it's the 60, 65th anniversary of Godzilla. And uh, let's look on the back. The best we can because it's such a huge box sorry about the reflection um comes with a diorama now if you know um lou del masso lou del masso is a fantastic science fiction builder i mean honestly ridiculously good uh he's retired now um so all he does is build uh he does what he wants to do which is fantastic good for him uh, but check out his video of his build of this one. It's fantastic. And check out his videos for his, all his other builds as well because they're all superb. Um, and that's it. So that is our update for February. So pretty decent, really. I was actually, when I was planning this um, update, I was thinking to myself, well, what have I done? I've done three models. One of them's a cardboard one. I haven't really done much. But as it turns out, it's a fair bit, really. That's not bad going. I'm quite pleased with that. Uh, a few additions to my stash, which is always nice. Um, especially with, with all those Matchbox kits and Airfix kits and things. That's, they're really cool. Um, so, yeah. Pretty damn good. So, that's about it really for this month. And I'll be seeing you next month. So, remember to be fun, be creative, but be different. And I'll see you